Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this week I'd like to focus on being able to import a character and rig it from Photoshop. So when you create a character in Photoshop, the first thing you need to think about is um, what size your character is going to be inside your canvas. So for example, I created a canvas here that is 1920 by 1280 because it's the same size as I'm going to export when I do my real movie. And I drew my character in this canvas in this position. And so this means that this is my far shot view of this character. If you want to use your character for far, close up, and mid shots, then you need to make sure that your canvas is large enough that when you zoom in, that you don't see pixels. Because of course, you know, if this is a close up shot in this hand, I see pixels on this artwork. That's still going to be true when you import it into um, our technology. So if your original artwork is bitmap, Sometimes you might need several different versions of your character. You might need a far version, a mid version, and a, and a close-up version. The advantage of doing your artwork in Toon Boom itself, or doing it in a vector program, is that you don't have to worry about having close, mid, and far. So you might say, well, why do some people choose to do their artwork in Photoshop? Well, the reason some people do choose to do that is because they might be able to do certain types of shading and effects and whatnot that you can do in Photoshop that you cannot do necessarily easily on a vector program. So from here now, if I've got all my different layers, the way that we import Photoshop files into Toon Boom is that if you have a bunch of different layers, it will import each layer onto a separate cell, but on the same drawing layer in the timeline. And the reason that we did it that way is because when you're working with Photoshop files, if you do that Photoshop style animation, then um, you know the way that that animation works is it uses different layers to simulate a different cell. And so in order to support that, by default, that's the way that files are imported. However, you can also have the different layers here import onto separate drawing layers within Toon Boom technology. And to do that, it's really simple. All we have to do is select the drawing layer and then do a Control G or Command G for group. And so whenever you put a group, it says put the drawings that are underneath this group onto a new drawing layer. And so if I want each piece of artwork to be on its own drawing layer, then I'll just add a group for each piece of artwork. So now if I look through my file, I can see that I've got each character layer there on its own group. And I can just delete that background layer if I don't need it. So now I'll just save my file and then I can go ahead and open up Harmony and we'll try to import this character in. So now the first thing that I want to do here is I'll just go to File Import Images and then I'll browse for my Photoshop file which I can see right there, Character Test. And then I want to go Create Layer and then I want to create the layers based off of the file names so that it will create uh, those individual layers and I may or may not choose to vectorize these items. If you do choose to vectorize it, it means that you will be able to use your brush tool or your eraser tool on that layer after you've drawn it uh, or after you've imported it, which can be useful. If you do want to do that, then usually you want to keep this vectorization style as color so that you keep the color from your Photoshop file. If you don't care about being able to use your brush tool or being able to use your eraser tool on your drawing, you can uncheck vectorize and you can just bring it in that way. But just for fun, let's uh, vectorize it as color and click OK. And then here, when it says composite image, this means it will flatten all the, all the layers down to one layer. So I, instead, I want to choose all layers as images and just leave that on straight and then click OK. So now we can see it went ahead and imported in my layers and it's got um, each one of these guys here as a layer so um, we can see that actually it did take the name of the group and so if you do want to have these named appropriately then you can see how it did name it the name of the file was character test and the name of the group was group 8 and so if I wanted it to name it accordingly then I could put a couple of letters there for my name of my character and then I could put the name of the group there as well. So from here now um, probably what's going to be the best thing for me to do is just go through and, and rename some of this layer um, and it is usually a good idea to um, have some kind of string at the beginning with the character's name so this is going to be the front hand and then this is going to be 
the front sleeve, and so on. By the way, I do like the naming convention of naming things front and back. And so you can see here that when you have a three-quarter view of a character, then if you flip, if your character is um, symmetrical, if you flip your character, the, the, the arm here or the leg that's in the front is always in the front. And so that's why it's a good idea to name things front and back instead of left and right. Because if I flip my character, those elements that were on the right will be on the left and the left would be on the right. But the front is always in the front and the back is always in the back. So that's a good way to do it. So now that I've got my layers all imported in on their own layers, it's time for me to go ahead and rig my character. And at this point, you can rig your character the same way you'd rig a normal vector layer in Toon Boom. And so you can choose to do it a number of different ways. You can choose to use peg layers to animate all of your drawing layers, or you can choose just to put the pivot on the original drawing. Um, like I've told some people in the past, it can be useful to keep the artwork separate from the animation so that when you're swapping out drawings, that you can drag and drop drawings separate from keyframes. And so if I want to do that, then the way of doing this here is just to select all of my layers here, and then I can click on the Add Peg button, and this adds a peg layer for each drawing layer. So now I can um, go in my network view on my network view toolbar here, which you can get to via Windows toolbars and network view, allows you to organize your network. So you can take the display module at the bottom there, click on the order network up button, and then order your network. And so now here, what I want to do is I want to set the pivot point on each one of the green peg layers. Because if I don't want to animate on the drawing layer, then I don't really care where the um, pivot point is on my drawing layer. And the other thing that I usually like to do is I like to um, go in here and turn off animate using animation tools on my drawing layers because that way you don't accidentally animate on those drawing layers when you're using your transform tool it will go directly to the peg layer to animate it so you can go ahead in there and sometimes when you're changing properties on a variety of different layers on the same time it can be helpful to click on the down facing arrow here and show your layer properties view right in this layer. So that way, as you select your layer, it updates right over there. So you can very quickly just, you know, double check and make sure that it's turned off on all those layers. So now that I've got that property turned off on all of those layers, um, it means that I won't accidentally animate on the drawing layer. It will always go to the peg layer. So now I want to set the pivot points. So I can select each peg layer, the green layer here, and I can use my rotate tool to set the pivot on that layer. I usually tend to use the rotate tool instead of the pivot tool. You can use the pivot tool on your drawing layers and then you can promote the pivot up to the peg layer. But I find it just a little bit easier to set the pivot for the entire drawing layer at once. The difference is that when you use your pivot tool, it sets it only for the individual drawing that you're working on. So in other words, if I have eight different hands, each hand can have its own different pivot point. And I find it a little bit easier just to work with one pivot point for the entire drawing layer. And what the rotate tool does is the rotate tool will adjust the pivot point for the entire drawing layer. Be careful when you're setting pivot points not to set the pivot point on the transform tool directly. If I move the pivot point here, you see where there's a ghost where that pivot point was before. This means that the pivot point that you're moving is only a temporary pivot. And as such, this is not a permanent move of your pivot. Whereas with, when you're moving your rotate tool, if I grab the center handle there, you don't see any ghost left behind where it was before. So this allows me to go in here and I can just drag the center point of my pivot to be where I want it to be on each individual drawing layer. So now I've got the pivot point set up properly on each one of my drawing layers and I can verify by just clicking on the drawing layer and making sure that the pivot point shows up in the right spot. And if it doesn't, there's two things to check. The first one is to make sure that animate using animation tools is turned off on the drawing layer. And then the second thing to check is to make sure that the pivot point is set up properly on the green peg layer. 
So it is a good idea just to do a really quick, you know, click on all your drawings and make sure that they're in the right spot and then you're ready to go on to the next step. And so the next step is that we want to actually create our hierarchy here. And so the way that we create hierarchies in Toon Boom is by connecting together peg layers in order to make a connection, a parent-child relationship. So for example, if I take the out port of my peg layer and I just drag right where that dot is and I drag it down, I can connect that to the in port of the upper arm. And you see here in my camera view when I do that, when I have my sleeve selected, both the sleeve and the upper arm are moving together. And then you can do the upper arm as a parent of the lower arm and the lower arm as a parent of the child. Now, this is a simple parent-child relationship. Sometimes you also want to be able to have a peg layer that will allow you to squash and stretch, for example, the upper arm on its own. And if you do want that, then instead of connecting your upper arm peg directly to your lower arm peg, what you can do is you can select your upper arm peg and click on that add peg button so that it can add a new peg for us. And then what we can do is connect this one instead as the parent of the lower arm. And what this means is that you can select the first peg when you want to squash and stretch just that upper arm but you can go up to the parent peg when you want to move all of those elements together. If you do add additional pegs like this, you will need to go in there and make sure that the pivot point is in the right spot for that new peg. And it's not really terribly critical if these are at exactly the same spot. If they're slightly off, like it, it won't really change your animation. So just be aware that you can do parent-child relationships in that manner. And um, so I'll just go ahead and do it on these other layers as well. When you're looking at the head and the neck, then one thing that you want to be aware of is that the head is actually a child of the neck. And the reason for that is that when you move your neck, usually you want your head to move with it. So the neck is the parent of the head, and then the head is going to be a parent of all of the facial features that you have in there. Now, once you've done the hierarchy for your arms and legs and your head, the last thing is how do you connect together everything overall? And I usually separate out the torso into a hip section and a torso section. Some people just have one. Um, if you have the hips and the uh, torso, then the hips layer is going to be the parent of your legs. And your torso layer will be a parent of your arms. and your head. So together now I can move the upper body and I can move my lower body via the hips. So then the last thing that we want to do is we want to create one overall peg to use as the what we call the master peg so I can just hit control P over here to add a peg and I can connect it to my hips and to the torso. And this peg, usually we put the pivot point between the feet. It's just, you can either put it between the feet or in the belly button, but I find most people tend to put it in the feet. And then this peg now, if I look for it in my timeline, is always going to be the one at the top um, because it's the parent of everything, so it will show it at the top. Now we haven't really looked at the timeline as I've been doing this because I've been doing all my connections in the network view. But when you do look in the timeline, layers, when they're parented, they become indented. So you can see easily where parent-child relationships are. You can also drag and drop elements on top of each other in the timeline to set parent-child relationships. However, when you're using Animate Pro and Harmony, it's much better to do the connections in the network view so that you make sure that you can see exactly what's going on with the connections. Now that I'm ready to animate my character, all I have to do is collapse everything inside my master character. I can go to a frame later on in the timeline and I can hit F5 to extend the exposure. And now I can go in here and I can use my transform tool and I can animate my elements around. So, you know, I can do this just by clicking on a layer here and I can hit B to go up to the parent layer if I want to animate 
you know, um, the, the parent peg there separately. And so often uh, you might grab the hand and go B, B, B a few times to get up to the, the layer that it is that you want to work on. Um, so knowing B is a handy one. If you do want to go down, back down to the child, Shift B will bring you back down again. So um, you can hit F6 also on there to, to stick the keyframe on all the layers. If you just sort of um, select a drawing and move it, it will put the keyframe only on the layer that you move. So for example, let's say he's going to wind up here and then he's going to kick a ball. So, you know, as I get the leg going out there, if I um, check out all the keyframes inside, see how on the second and third um, keyframes that I set, it only set keyframes on the layers that I moved. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put keyframes on all the layers, so I can just hit F6 and F6 again, and then if I open that again, now we see that I have keyframes on all the layers inside. And it didn't do it because I didn't actually hit F6, because <laughs> I'm on a Mac and I have those buttons at the top. If you want to do it without F6, um, you can also hit the Insert Keyframe button. And so that's another way to do it. And you can see that being affected on the main timeline there too. And when I open it up now, I can see that I've got all the keyframes on all the layers inside. And if I want to play back through my animation, I can just drag through there. Or I can go up to my playback toolbar and I can hit play. Check out how that movement works. So that's it for this tip. Um, I know that I went through character rigging super fast here. If you want to check out some related tips, go back and check out the tips on pivot points that I did at the very beginning. There are some tips on, on rigging characters. There's tips on how to rig the face um, and these various different tips. The only thing you need to be aware of when you're working with bitmap imported images instead of vector images is that you may be limited to some of the effects that you can use on those bitmaps. So for example, because your colors are not vector, you wouldn't be able to do any effects on the color. Um, you can do certain effects that are supported in bitmap, um, but you just can't do all the effects that are vector effects using, you know, Toon Boom's vector stuff. So beware of that when you're animating. You may be limited to, you know, not doing as many masks and, and cutters and things like that to achieve some of the cool stuff that you can do in, in Toon Boom technology. So, of course, you can do a lot with bitmap layers as well. So I hope you guys have fun, and I'll see you later.